My name is Richard Marklin, and I am a professor of mechanical engineering at Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I am a visiting professor at the Technical University in Delft, Netherlands this semester, which is fall of 2019. I am teaching a course on freehand sketching for engineers, and I'm making this set of videos to help you develop the skill to freehand sketch. The objectives are twofold. First, short term. Within two months, you will be able to freehand sketch your ideas of products or systems. But the more important goal is the long-term goal, which is that after two months, you'll be able to enhance the creativity and innovation of your design, whether it's a product, a system, a network, etc. You will have, I believe, more influence in the design process. Now, what is freehand sketching? This is very simply is you're drawing with only a pencil on a blank piece of paper. This is an old technique, but it hasn't really been taught in the last 30 years to at least engineers. And we're trying to bring it back because it's very effective for brainstorming. All right, let me talk about the advantages of both freehand sketching and CAD, because I'm not against CAD. CAD's very useful. But the advantages of freehand sketching are that in the brainstorming phase, the initial stage of a design process, you can generate many ideas very quickly. I can generate one idea per minute. Give me 10 minutes, I'll give you 10 ideas. And they're very quick sketches. Another advantage is that you can enlarge the set of potential ideas to at least evaluate. Right now, many times, there are only very few ideas that a design team will evaluate. Freehand sketching opens up the net of possible ideas to evaluate. And another advantage is that you can help others visually communicate their ideas. CAD is very useful, too. But CAD is for the design details, refining the design, getting the design ready for fabrication and manufacturing. So in essence, freehand sketching and CAD complement each other. Before we start drawing, I want to show you some drawings that were done by past students at Marquette University. These students are engineering students and they're not designers or artists. And they were in my course, and after four weeks, they were able to draw like this. This is a set of orthographic drawings. And you have the front, the side, and the top of a music box. These were all done freehand. You can see the parallel lines, no rulers, no grid paper. Here is an isometric view of the same music box. And you can see the light construction lines, and you can see his method for constructing and conveying visually this music box. Here's another set of orthographic drawings by a different student of the music box. This is lines, no shading, but it's equally, I think, equally effective. And here's another drawing of a isometric view of the music box. Now I want to show you some drawings that I have done. This is a drawing of a compact fluorescent bulb. This was freehand, no rulers, no grid paper. This is a spiral. This is a challenging object to draw. But after four weeks, with the class that I teach, students are able to draw this pretty well. Here's another drawing that I did. This is a sphere. I made it into the Earth. Here's the equator, the prime meridian. This is where I live, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 43 degrees latitude, and approximately 90 degrees longitude west of where I am right now, which is Delft. Netherlands. Here's another drawing I want to show you that I did, and I want to tell you the story behind this. About eight years ago, we moved into our brand new engineering building. It is marvelous. We were 
all given new spaces for faculty offices. So I did a sketch. This is a plan oblique of the type of furniture that I wanted for my office. Here's my desk curved. Students can sit here. Here's So I met with the interior designer and I asked her, I said, would you please give me this furniture? And her first response was, who did this drawing? I said, well, I did the drawing. She said, I haven't seen anybody draw like this for 25 years. I said, well, I can draw like this. And she was so impressed with the drawing that she said, I'm going to give you this furniture. It will be special order, but I'm going to give you this furniture. I said, thank you very much. All right, now we're going to start drawing. First of all, we have to determine what kind of drawing instrument we're going to use. I recommend a wooden pencil. A wooden pencil, in my opinion, is better than mechanical because the lead is more robust. It doesn't break as easily, although at times it may break. And I think you can get more variety of texture and weight of line with a wooden pencil than a mechanical pencil. This is a 10 millimeter diameter or 3 eighths inch diameter pencil. A conventional pencil would be something like this, much thinner. You can use either one, it does not matter. I prefer the thick ones. Some people call this the kindergartner pencil for small children. Works very well for people of all ages. The next thing to do is to hold the pencil correctly. Hold it in a way that will allow you to visually express your ideas. And that way, in my opinion, is like a dart. You see? This is like a dart. You need to throw a dart like this. Hold the pencil like this. Hold it loosely. All right. The third point is this, is that when you draw, when you sketch, your entire upper extremity should be loose and relaxed. I'm talking about not only the fingers and the wrists, but I'm talking about the shoulder and the elbow. And in my class, I always ask the students to stand up and stretch before we draw. So your upper extremity is relaxed. So let's start putting marks on the paper. Most of the marks you're going to be putting on paper in this set of videos are parallel straight lines like this. Just like that. Parallel straight lines. Why is that? Because we are going to be using the parallel drawing systems. And the parallel drawing systems are orthographic, isometric, and oblique. We are not going to do perspective, which is also called convergent. And so you need to learn how to draw parallel straight lines. Okay? All right. So when you draw parallel straight lines, what you do is you keep your upper extremity loose, flexed, and draw like this. Now, if you see your lines kind of going like this, that's probably because your shoulder is too tight. Loosen that shoulder. Use all the degrees of freedom in that shoulder so that you can draw straight lines like this. Okay? Now, what if I wanted to draw a vertical line here? I could go like this. Well, there are two problems with that vertical line. First of all, it's not very straight. And secondly, my wrist is very uncomfortable. And thirdly, these lines are not very parallel. So what do we do instead? What we do is we rotate the paper. You rotate the paper and you draw your, vert your parallel lines so that the wrist is in a neutral position. And if you need a diagonal, then you rotate 45 degrees and you can draw like that, you see? So it's okay. In fact, you should rotate the paper. When I draw, I am frequently rotating the paper, all right? The next thing I wanna talk about is weight of line. This pencil is a very expressive drawing instrument. And if you notice, I can draw very lightly, darker, 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 darker. And I can get start to get really dark, right? 
Now, I think it would be very difficult to do this with software, although the software packages are getting better. But this is expressive, ladies and gentlemen. This expresses your humanity. Now, let's say we want to draw a set of vertical parallel lines. Then you rotate the paper. You can start dark if you want, lighter. You can go like you can go darker. I can rotate again, and I can do this. So, this is my recommendation. Before you watch the next video, which is going to be orthographic, is that you need to practice drawing straight parallel lines. So here's my recommendation. Take two sheets of paper and fill all four sides with parallel lines. Just fill it and go from edge to edge, edge to edge. Just fill them with lines. Rotate the paper. Vary the texture, edge to edge. And keep going until you have filled four sides completely. Then you'll be ready for the next video, which is going to be orthographic. All right, so I want to very briefly summarize what we've done in this video. I've given you an introduction. I told you the two objectives of freehand sketching. I've shown you how to hold a pencil, how to make straight parallel lines, and practice before the next video. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. And before I close, I want to show you a quote by Benjamin Franklin. Do well by being good. Thank you very much.